My name is Michael Lean and this is another Bristlecone broadcast. Today you're in for a treat. We have Dr. Ravi Starzl, one of the nation's leading thought leaders on AI and machine learning. Dr. Ravi got his PhD from Carnegie Mellon. He also is a recent convert to AI. And what do I mean by that? He can see the future through the lens of AI and unlike a lot of people who are doom and gloom and we're going to be taken over by robots, he can see a future of prosperity and basically a higher quality of life for everyone. We're going to get into that. Dr. Ravi has also worked, and why it's applicable today, with most of the Fortune 500 on their AI initiatives, as well as the Department of Defense on really far-reaching, over-the-horizon AI projects that may have a corporate application, but just not right now. They're just doing really cool stuff. So Dr. Ravi, thank you. Thank you for having me. So you were telling me recently that you work on, and I wrote it down here, novel forms of specialized AI. Yes. How is that different from just AI? Well, so artificial intelligence as a, as a category has been around since the 1960s, way back when the first perceptrons were invented. What's a perceptron? Perceptron is really just like one neuron out of a neural net, is a sim okay. simple way of thinking about it. Uh, and it essentially develops a weighting based on experience mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, uh, of the data that it's seen. And uh, the, for a variety of reasons, it, it took up until now for AI to really kind of find its stride. Okay. Now, we've, we've, we've seen its application in machine vision up to this point. We've seen its application in prior natural language processing fields, uh, in anomaly detection. So it's been tremendously useful. And we already live largely in a world defined mm -hmm. by algorithms and machine learning. But I think what's happened recently particularly just in the last year, is this qualitative experience where we've, we're interacting with machines that, at least at a naive level, kind of pass the Turing test. Yeah. And it just gives us a really different feeling as to what's going on. These things look and sound and act intelligent. So it caught our attention. It, it did pass a test where, unless I'm really paying attention, I'll think I'm speaking to a human, whether it's through a phone or interacting through a computer. And I know, at least in supply chain, we see companies rushing to the AI goldmine. But you were telling me a little early about outcome-based AI, so people thinking we're going to throw AI at it and we want the outcome to be cost savings or more revenue. Mm. But you're telling me that that's actually kind of a dangerous approach. Can yes. you explain why? Uh, I, I think it is because the, the destination is only part of the problem. You really also need to be uh, cognizant of how you arrive at that destination. Do you have any stories to illustrate that? Well, yeah, actually, the world is replete in recent times with them. But one in particular uh, that I'm familiar with is the DARPA dogfighting challenge, okay. uh, where they've, they rigged up uh, in a simulation some human fighter pilots flying F-16s to fight against some AI fighter pilots flying F-16s and AIs fighting against each other as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the AIs dominated the competition. Okay. And, um, but when they debriefed and asked the pilots, why were you beaten so badly by the AIs? The answers were, well, the AIs followed suicidal tactics. <laughs> they, they broke every rule of engagement. Uh, they, they paid no regard for cost to equipment, life damage, things like that. And generally speaking, the opinion of the humans was, I wouldn't fly with one. <laughs> <laughs> so they, may, they might win the dogfight, but Geneva Convention's out the window. They might, you know, destroy 16 F-16s before taking the objective. It was just... It was, it was, it was a, 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 a kind of, excuse the language, a balls-to-the-wall contest of who can deploy the most aggressive strategy to gain the quickest advantage. That's interesting. In a test of wills, it, exactly. AI won. Exactly. So I can see the application right away. In a corporate setting, you can't take that kind of risk. No, and, and, and that's, that's where the rub really is. Because, okay. uh, and, and going back to your first question, which I didn't properly answer, the difference between the general current forms of large language model uh, AI and specialized AI is that it, when, you f when you have a problem, let's say an objective task or an information need, you feed it into this big beach ball of mm -hmm. a large language model and it works on that problem from the outside, uh, the problems on the inside and the models on the outside kind of digesting it from beginning to end. Yeah. But specialized AI would actually be where you ch take that beach ball and you replace it with a string of pearls. So you have hmm. lots of small, little, specialized artificial intelligences that are good at segments of the problem. And you advance the problem along these 
particular segments of specialized AI. So you get all of the skills, but none of the personality. Okay. And it also allows you to architect a, a pathway, almost like a mm -hmm. microservices type architecture, where you can actually define the functionality of the AI in aggregate by simply mapping the chain of uh, communication between the specialized AI components. So how do we see that in companies today? Is anybody pursuing that? Or is that still over the horizon type applications? I think we'll see that by, you know, I mean, predictions are notorious and I'll, yeah. I'll definitely regret making any predictions. <laughs> <laughs> Only fools and charlatans say they can predict the future. Here's my prediction. Right, yeah. exactly right. So that having been said, I think uh, we're going to see uh, a continuous stream of major innovations every 18 to 36 months, kind of in a big TikTok cycle. And I think the next major one is yes. specialized AI, which will greatly enhance explainability, greatly enhance controllability, and greatly enhance the ability to accomplish the same objectives with far less compute power. Is it fair to say that this is not going to be a top-down initiative in companies? It really has to be people within the organization embracing this culture of innovation? There's no doubt that the best the best results will come when there's a grassroots adoption. Okay. Uh, because y y you know, no one at the top can think of all the interesting ways that a technology could be deployed to help someone get their job done. Yeah. So the, you know, William Gibson said it best when he said, the street finds its own use for tech. Okay. Uh, right. And so inside an organization, that's kind of the same sure. thing. Uh, now, but we do also need top-down initiatives and efforts. It's not enough to just let everyone figure it out on their own. Mm -hmm. And I think the particular way in which, you know, if I had to give a recipe, what I would say is identify the particular pain points in your, in your organization that are complex. They're not simplistic pain points, but pain points where you really wish you had extra skilled labor to help solve it. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that will directly create some significant value. Uh, if solved or improved in some fashion. And that will be the area where the current uh, generative or modern LLM AI will really have its biggest impact. Because, because those, those, those systems should be treated as peer collaborators. Okay. They shouldn't be treated as boxes you put in the corner and give some rote automation task to. They may or may not be able to handle any particular automation task. You're, you're saying you should treat them like a colleague. The, yes. I'm going to go gra grab Deborah down the hall to help with this problem because yes. I'm hitting a wall. Yes. The, the, the reason that I can see such a positive, bright future, and I'm really not phased. I mean, of course, this is new technology, and of course, there are risks and there are potential dangers associated with mm -hmm. any new technology. So I'm not blind to the possibility that things could go wrong, and they will, for sure, go yeah. wrong. But I'm also aware that the vast majority of the impact that these systems have the potential to make is entirely positive. And it has the ability to imp improve the, the specific and individual lives of people at every level. Not just create a new uh, flow of economic uh, mm -hmm. opportunity or, or, or just change the jobs numbers, but every single person working in each job has an opportunity to have their life made better, hmm. lower stress. It enables them, in, in every person's skill set, even in mine, right? I mean, yeah. I, I, I've been studying AI for 15 years. Every single day I find a gap, <laughs> right? Something I didn't know before that I'm deeply embarrassed that I didn't know before, and I'm quickly like trying to learn every single day, uh, and, and it never stops. Okay. The, the advantage with AI is that you're never stuck because of those skill gaps. The AI can help you just roll right through them. It can, it can essentially uh, be the part of your brain that you wish you had, hmm. right? It can, I like that. When, when, you, when, you, when you're operating in a collaborative, symbiotic fashion with one of these generative AIs, especially one that might be oriented and specifically fine-tuned on your organization's data and mm -hmm. purposes, uh, it can literally be kind of the integrated pocket calculator for, for enabling you to very rapidly accomplish all of your tasks. Which is just a continuation of the journey we're already on. Exactly yeah. right. Dr. Ravi, thank you. So if you're interested to learn more, we do have our own uh, R&D around advanced AI, as, as you like to say, innovative AI with specialized uses. Um, just reach out to us. We can get you in touch with Dr. Ravi. We have a whole studio devoted to it. We'd love to hear from you and very happy to give you some upfront insights and analysis to help you with your needs.